What's up guys? Welcome back to the DMV channel. I'm Jeff Dixon. Isaiah's behind the camera and today we're going to be putting paint on our LS Miata. Let's get to work. Wow, man, look at that. It's just gumming up. Well, we didn't get very far. This is set for, I think, four days. And the primer's still a little soft. And that's some of the downfall to using rattle can spray paint is that it doesn't have hardeners in it. So as the solvents release and evaporate from the paint, it leaves behind the solids and that takes forever to do. It gummed up with this and it doesn't say on it that it's primer that is sandable. But my assumption was this Rust-Oleum primer is sandable. But I did a little sample spot and it is sanding really well. So we went to Walmart, spent $30 and bought some more cans of filler primer that is sandable. Who knew? So now Isaiah and I are gonna scotch bright down the car as quick as we can. It's dinner time. We really gotta go in and get to eating or my wife's gonna kill me. But we wanna be able to work on it tomorrow. So we're gonna scotch bright it down real quick and try to spray this on and then go eat. Let's get to work. Well, it's DIY perfect enough, I guess. So. We scotch fried it down really, really fast. Then we blew it down really, really fast. We wore gloves so we don't have to wipe the car or re-prep it for primer because now nah, we're in a real hurry. So I'm gonna get my mask on and get spraying. Let's get this car sprayed real quick. Isaiah, I'm gonna need you to, uh, I guess, record the whole thing. the second car I've ever rattle can and what I can say is it freaking sucks but painting for the novice at home DIY often sucks anyway but this definitely sucks it so we couldn't get the other stuff to sand it just gummed up so it's still gooey it's still got chemical in it that solvents that need to evaporate I kind of knew that but I was hoping if we put on this coat it would go and now I've got spots that are cracking from the paint we just put on. And what that's an indicator of is the paint underneath still had chemicals that it was releasing, but it skimmed over on the top. So, and then when you put another coat of paint on it, it activates the chemicals underneath again, and it causes problems. And as you can see right here, We've got some slight, it looks like cracks. I don't know if they'll show up in the camera, but we've got some cracking there. Um, a little bit of cracking down here. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Hopefully we can get this thing to a point where we can sand it and just move past all this nonsense. I just want to wrap the freaking thing anyway. That's why I'm wrapping it. I don't want to deal with paint. I freaking hate paint and body. And I hate it because I suck at it because I don't ever do it. Actually, I used to do it more and I had a Jeep that turned out pretty good, but that's about the only success I've ever really had with paint and body. I freaking suck at it. Anyway, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Gonna go eat dinner. You guys have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so we took a risk and we shot a another primer over the other primer it's working we're sanding it and it's going good it's we're sanding 150 right now so we'll be putting another coat of primer and then taking it down to probably 320. we got our uh we got our redneck air conditioners going because it is hot 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 how's your sanding going good yeah it's looking good just a long way to go all right let's get back to work And I start to cry
The sanding and scotch brighting is going fantastic. Really happy it's going so well. So originally I wanted to do white car. We talked about that a little bit, jam it out in white, but there's so many problems with that. I know white spray paint would get grungy and spray paint is not as tough. At least it doesn't harden as quickly as normal automotive paint. So we settled on a satin blue. The goal is to wrap the car and I just want the under pinnings, the jams, and under the hood and under the trunk to be a solid color and not be black. So I want it to be something that, that complements the wrap. So we decided to go with a satin blue. I've done blue in the past on a rat rod project and spray paint. One nice thing about it using a satin color so is like this. I don't have to do my body work right now on this. I can spray paint it let it cure out real good, then do my body work and just use the spray paint like a primer. The problem with spray paint is if all the solvent is not out of this and evaporated out of this, when you put Bondo or body filler or other paints on top of it and it still leaches out, it's gonna cause problems. I know this still has some processing going on because it's still soft. So it's not completely hard yet. So we're gonna go with this. I think it's gonna be a good choice. I think it's gonna look pretty, pretty cool. And then we can move forward. All right. You got anything to say? Dinner bell rang. Okay, let's go eat. We gotta go eat. This is really gonna act as a guide coat. We did start with 80 grit, then we went to 150. So I'm gonna put this on. This isn't the final product, but it's gonna be a guide coat. Let us know. Then we're gonna do body work on top of this, get the thing real good. And uh, I think it's gonna turn out nice. It sucks to be putting this much work into a rattle cam paint job, but I mean, you gotta make it look right. All right, let's do it. As you can see, the blue turned out great. Putting a second coat of primer on it was a risk. It definitely worked out. This is absolutely the best spray paint I've ever used in my life. I am so impressed with this. It's got technology in it. it says so right on the can. But honestly, if you're gonna do this, try it out. I think you're gonna enjoy the spray paint. I don't think you'll regret it. But that's it for the day. The car turned out pretty good. Now we gotta let it cure up, sand it down, do some body work, get back on it. We'll see you next. Hold it, hold it, hold it. The video is not over. I thought it was, and then I realized something. I haven't told you whether or not you should do this. Honestly, I don't think you should. I think spray painting a car with a rattle can is a terrible idea. And there's really three reasons. Number one, it takes forever to cure. It is going to take so long for you to get a paint job that you can wet sand, that you can buff, that you can sand, that you can do body work on top of. It just takes way too long. Who's got that kind of time? I know I don't and it's really slowed me down dealing with this. Number two, the paint is just not that great. There's not a lot of colors to choose from. There's hardly any metallics and it's gonna tiger stripe on you real bad. The nozzle spray on it is about that big around. It's about two inches at the best. A normal paint gun, six to nine inches. It's gonna fan out a lot better. It's gonna do a lot better job and it's not gonna look like you're driving around some kind of project. Which brings me to another point. When should you paint your car with this rattle can? Obviously you should at some point at least I think you should, because I did. And if you know anything about car history, hot rod culture, black primer, all that, the rat rod stuff, that all comes back to pre-war cars. After kids got out of World War II, they made hot rods. 
They painted the hot rods flat black or whatever other kind of primer they could find so that they could work on the car while they drove it. It's just a cheap way to do things. And that's my intention. I can get this thing in satin blue. I can do a little body work in the area, paint it back again, blend it with Scotch-Brite, and nobody will ever know it's a work in progress. The other thing about painting a car like this with a rattle can paint job is you've got to make it look like it's intentional. You don't want a hood rat car running around out there that just looks like a piece of crap. And that's what you're going to get with a rattle can. I am wrapping this car. I want to do something very creative with the outside of it. And I just want the jams and the trunk and everything that's open that's not going to be wrapped to be uniform and a complementary color to the wrap. And I can get by with that in the jams because the spray pattern is small, but jams are small. So on a big area like a panel, it's gonna look crappy. So my advice to you is don't rattle can your car. Go out, get with a buddy, learn how to do it, and paint it properly. Like I said earlier in the video, I did a Jeep years back. I've done a couple cars, but I did a Jeep that turned out really good. And I had to sand it down and paint it twice to get it to turn out good. The first time it, it jumped out pretty bad. The second time it flowed on, looked great. So that's my advice. Don't paint your car with a rattle can unless you can make it look really intentional and like part of a theme. Otherwise, it's never going to look as good as that Honda at the dealership. It's always going to look like some low buck crappy project. And nobody wants their car to look like a low buck crappy project except the guys that are trying to build a project that looks like and like that. And that's part of the theme. You can get by with a crappy paint job if it's part of your theme. So make it part of your theme, make it intentional. But if you want a nice looking paint job, do not spray paint your, can your car with rattle cans. It will never look good. Even if it hardens and you wet sand and buff it, it's still going to look like crappy paint from Walmart. At best, at best, it's going to look like a tractor. And I don't know about you, but there aren't too many tractors out there that I think, man, that's an amazing paint job. So that's it. That's my tip. I'm glad you guys stuck with me to the end. I just had to get that out there. I will see you again next weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. It means a lot to me. You guys have a great week. We'll see you soon.